Hey guys, Will Terry here. Uh, another video for my blog and for my YouTube channel. Um, I, before I get going on the subject today, I, I just want to mention that my story art class with Jake Parker has sold out. This is uh, May of 2013. We're really happy to announce that it, the, the full version of the class has sold out. There still is the light version that you can get. If you go to my blog, you can check it out. It's at willterry.blogspot.com. There should be a link right down here in the description area um, but go there and check it out we might be running the class again in the future but I wanted to make this video for the the people that are enrolled in that class the online class but also for the the students that I teach at the university because I think this is a very important subject why visual artists improve slower than musicians now for the sake of the title I had to put musicians in there but I really mean all artists why do visual artists improve slower than all artists all other artists. Um, and what, what this comes from is I have students every year um, who I get in some of my classes at the university and it seems like they don't want to learn from me. They don't want to take my advice. They don't want to try the things that I ask them to try. They're resistant to the critiques. When I do gr give a critique there's a lot of yeah but yeah but I did that because of this I did that. That begs the question well then why are you in school? Now I don't blame that entirely on the students. I think that the blame actually belongs on our public school system. Now, when I blame the public school system, a lot of times when I, when I talk negatively, I get a lot of teachers that are um, defensive. And this is not any kind of a criticism on teachers. There are a ton of committed teachers in the public school system. Um, I, I taught in the public school system for a little while in California, and I was committed. Um, so I know they, that, that it's not the teachers, that's not the problem, but it's the system we've been dealt with. And so I wanted to break this down into two reasons, okay? So, you know, why, why, um, why we as visual artists improve slower than other artists, okay? Um, and for most of us, I would say, most of us did not ever have art, um, art class, visual art class in high school or junior high or elementary school that was taught um, as an important subject, okay? So, and it was never broken down, um, and it was never treated, you know, it was never, we, we never went home and said, and, and our parents never said, hey, how come, you know, you failed art, but you did good in English and math, you know? Um, it's, it's what's wrong with these English and math grades, and I don't care if you did good in art, you know? Um, and so that's why I say, even if you had an art teacher that was good, which is very rare, um, that art, I shouldn't say it that way, but that, that art is, um, it's just usually not taught. And I've, I've had, I've been friends with some teachers, some high school art teachers, who are amazing artists in their own right, but their, tr their class has been treated as the, the dumping grounds for all the kids who are misbehaving. So they can't really teach art because the kids don't even care and don't even want to be there. Um, and so that's a problem too. So there's a lot of problems that I, I don't really want to get into other than the fact that Art was never treated as a serious subject in high school. For most people, I know I'm generalizing here, okay? But for most of us, we were never held accountable. Compound that with the fact that the ACT scores and the SAT scores do not measure art skills. So if you're like me, you go through high school and you do well in art, but you suffer in English and math, there's never a, you know, the, 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 the guidance counselors and, the, and your principal and the and your parents don't don't say, well, it's it's cool that you did really good in art, um, and that's okay that you're sucking in everything else because at least you're doing good. No, it's it's not treated that way, um, and so because of that, um, I think that art class has become one of those things where, in, in high school and in somebody's honking their horn outside, um, where it's just I'm coming where it's never been that important. Okay, so enough of that. But that leads into the next thing where, you know, if we look at, we look at like music class, right? So music in, in high school, well, usually band class had, um, had a purpose. You know, there was a marching band, there was the, the orchestra, there was the choral group, and they were always preparing for a concert. So there was kind of a need to perform, a need to get better so they could show off what they were doing. Rarely, I mean, we never, in my high school, we never had 
art shows. Sure, our art would be put up in the hallways and stuff, but it was never really an accountability thing like, holy cow, you guys are up there singing and you suck, you know? I mean, so the, the teacher, the music teacher, had some pressure to make sure that the band was doing good. I played in the band, and, you know, I got erasers thrown at me and coins and stuff for playing wrong, you know? So, like, if we if we break it down and we look at it, you know, in art class, or in, in, in music class, you would get things that were concrete, that were taught to you, like, you know, that was supposed to be played staccato, and that note was too flat, you know. So those are concrete things where you can go, okay, well, I need to, to change that. Um, you know, if you're an author, if you're, if you're a writer, um, all through school, um, we got our papers handed, handed back to us with red markings on them saying, you missed a comma, and you used too many words, you need to edit this down. Um, and uh, you you know there's no description here. There's too you know there's too many adjectives and you're you're fluffing it up and stuff like that. So concrete things were given to us. Um, another one is let's say you were in drama class and you're preparing for the the play at the end of the the uh, the year. Um, you know your drama teacher would say things like you're not projecting and uh, you, you know you you were late. You missed your mark when you came out. So concrete things that students can can hold on to. Athletes are artists too. They have to make things up. They have to be creative, um, and they learn right away. You know, you didn't roll with the pick, or you know, you blew that bounce pass. So those are concrete things. Now go to art class, and what are we? What happens in art class? Well, from elementary school all the way through junior high and high school, we're given paper and crayons, or temper paint, or pastels, or or something, but. We're, we're given these supplies and we're just kind of cut loose and told to paint. And then when we bring those paintings home or those drawings home, what do our parents do? They put them on the refrigerator. So all the time we're, we're just getting these little strokes of that's great, that's great, that's great. When re in reality it's horrible because it's like a weed. We kind of just grew and doing our own thing without any real feedback, without any real concrete um, parameters like the other artists were given. Um, and that's why I tell my students when they come to the, univers the university, you know, I say, look, your counterparts that are going into English, they've had 12 years of English training. So they are, they are coming in as a freshman in English, and they have 12 years of experience. You're coming in as an artist, and a lot of you are starting at ground zero right now. So there's no comparison. So if anybody needs to work really hard, it's the artists. The visual artists should be working harder than anybody because they're so much further behind. Um, and this is, this is one thing that I think it's, it's helpful for us to understand because all the arts are the same. So you can't say that visual arts are any different than music, dance, sports, writing. They're all the same. They all have, they all share the same um, this, the same common principles that, that run through all of them. Um, and so those guys are getting concrete um, do's and don'ts and we're not for some reason. And I think it's a shame because I, you know I, I know that I know that there have at the university I teach and there's there's been uh, painting classes where where the students have told the teacher that they don't have time for lectures because they want to paint. Again, why are you there? You know, why are you, why are you wasting your money, uh, your parents' money, or you taking out a loan? Whatever. Okay. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is actually uh, what I see is that um, the students that actually love drawing and have drawn a lot and draw, excuse me, relatively well compared to the other students also are at a disadvantage and for, for, because what I see there is um, that drawing skills are not design skills and in order to be a good illustrator and of course I'm, 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 I'm making um, you know because I'm a children's book illustrator this this video really is for those who want to be illustrators and it, whether you want to go into comics or graphic novels or if you want to do concept work or if you want to do children's books um, any of that stuff, it, it, it's all the same. Um, it, the, the illustrations, the artwork needs to be designed well. Even if you want to do gallery work, um, 
for the most part, if you're doing anything representational, it needs to be designed well. Design is not is not intuitive. Um, it's something that definitely has to be learned. There are some intuitions that people have about design, but understanding the the um, a, a, a language of visual literacy really isn't natural to most of us, um, and it's something that we have to learn over time. And we learn from other people showing us things and 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 being enlightened um, in that way. Also, being very open-minded, being very critical of our own work, critical of others, being very observatory, but also getting tips passed down from other teachers who have, who have learned things. Um, and I find that the students that draw really well often rely on their drawing skills and they don't feel like they need to learn design like everyone else. And I see this in my classes all the time where I'm explaining certain principles and the students that draw really well are just in the back of the class drawing and in their mind, I feel like they're thinking, well, this really doesn't apply to me, you know. Um, and then it shows in their work, and then I have to be able to take them and say, your, your drawings are, are great, but look at where you're missing on the visual literacy stuff. So anyway, this is the kind of stuff that we're going over in, the, in our online story art class, um, Illustration for Storytellers. Um, and if you... Uh, would if you would be interested at all in taking that class, send me an email with your um, email address uh, and just say, hey, you know, I'd, I'd be interested in taking that class. And I can send out advance notice the next time that I do it um, online. Uh, we, don't have, we don't have a schedule for it. Again, this first class is going to start in June, and then it's going to run until through July. It's going to be ten, uh, 10 nights and 5 weeks. But... Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it um, will help you to understand that uh, if you have, you know, if you have a daughter, I get a lot of emails from parents with children who are child prodigies in a lot of ways in their drawing, and they say, "What's the next step?" And you know, one of the things that I say more than anything is, you've got to help your child to stay open-minded uh, enough to be able to learn, because that talent is only going to take them so far. Um, and th then from after that it's going to be the hard work but it's also going to be being open-minded enough to accept uh, critiques from others because we're, we, we're all in this together you know I would not be where I am right now if I didn't have a huge support group of friends in the illustration community the teachers that I had um, and staying connected with those people to where you know I'll ask when I trust somebody you know I'll ask them for a critique and and uh, be humble enough to take it and usually they're right and there's there's things in all of our work that we don't necessarily see uh, because we're too close to it you know we've seen it too much and so we need someone else to to point it out to us so anyway thanks a lot for watching and uh, you can always send me an email you can always make a comment on my blog um, to connect and um, I'll see you on my next video